Okay, um, long, long time ago, things were really simple. They were either true or not true. Bit of, bit of black and white. Well, then came photography. Excuse me. Ah, there we go. Um, with photography, things became a little bit fuzzy. I mean, yeah, things, are they true or not true? We, we still don't know if this image of Lee Harvey Oswald is true or not true. Um, and then with digital photography, things even got um, much more fuzzy, or in the other way, or, or on the other hand, oh, sorry, on the other hand, it became really clear that some things are definitely uh, not true. Like, for example, this um, Iranian rocket launch that is, yeah, a masterpiece of Photoshop, which you can do today easily. Um, the thing is, now we live in a new reality where things that might appear really not true are actually true. This is uh, the Schelling, the Netherlands, an island, um, and it now has uh, the first virtual traffic light in the Netherlands. You can see it over there, you can um, see it through your iPhone. Um, it's, it's a virtual traffic light, but can you imagine that when people know about this and they stop for the traffic light, look at it, um, and other people become curious, they start looking at it too. In fact, when enough people look at it, they will block the way and the virtual traffic light becomes true. <laughs> this is a good example of, of augmented reality um, use, especially the GPS-based augmented reality that I've been making a lot um, for the past year. It is um, a system where you can use GPS coordinates around the world to put your own items, uh, graphics, animations, whatever. Uh, so that means that you can, you can shape your world in the way you want it. This is a friend of mine, um, and it's uh, in Venice at the San Marco Square. He has put there this huge pigeon. Um, and I was taking photos of him posing next to his pigeon. Um, yeah, as a tourist, you can, of course, take the photographs of churches and whatever, but that's a bit boring. People are doing that, and those churches are um, going to be there for another 100 years, so it's much more fun to create your own environment that you can photograph. And it also gives you new possibilities. For example, if you're a graffiti artist, um, augmented reality allows you to, for example, create 3D surround graffiti floating in the sky or in the air around you. Uh, that's, that's something new, and it's also more practical. You can do it in like one second. You don't have to spend half an hour painting your stuff, and um, it's also free. It's digital, so you can copy it as much as you like. Another possibility is that you um, put your stuff wherever you are, for example, in the MoMA. And that's what I did um, last year. Actually, this image is not true. This is a sketch, but this is true. The next one. This is the uh, situation in the MoMA on the 9th of October. We had this um, exhibition opening. The MoMA was not involved. So um, about 30 artists contributed work and we, we put it on all floors of the MoMA. And we had this sort of uninvited exhibition um, at this great location because the MoMA is quite a relevant place for art. So we were finally able to see augmented reality art in this proper context. You see here that some things were appearing in 3D all around you, some things were hanging on the wall. <laughs> yeah, it was a great experience. Yeah, um, This image, this is also taken from that exhibition. This is actually not true, but you might know this, this person, it's Banksy. He was the first one to really become world famous for putting his art into the MoMA and some other museums as well. Um, and this image is actually a copy of him um, back in the MoMA during that 9th of October. I put him there in a sort of augmented uh, way. Uh, uh, a Banksy reenactment, you could say. So it's, it's an amazing um, technique, the fact that you can just put anything anywhere. And I'm also trying to, to yeah, get other people involved doing that. So for example, this video, this is the, the Venice Biennale. Um, in the beginning of this year, we created a system that you could use um, on your phone. And the Biennale is a very closed event. There's a, yeah, a number of countries that have a, a, their pavilion inside the Giardini area. But using this system, people could um, add new country pavilions into the Giardini area. 
So you could put the, the pavilion for Djibouti or Bhutan or whatever inside the Giardini, and people inside the Giardini could um, yeah, use their phone to see the pavilions and delete them again. Yeah, that's it. Um, and then the, f the funny thing was that actually the curator of the Biennale came and um, she came to view all the pavilions that were being placed there. You, you see them um, over here and she's watching them all. Actually, that's, that's not really true. Of course, she was not standing on the grass of her own uh, uh, Giardini area. So the, the conclu conclusion is um, don't trust your own eyes, believe what you are told. Um, and therefore, I'm going to show you a video now, a two-minute video, and it's a true story, if you would look through your phone. Let's go. Yeah. Conclusion is, it actually got to Washington. Somebody in Washington was, at one point, after we twittered about this event, at one point somebody was using the phone, um, the layer application, to view this augmented re reality balloon in Washington. Although we don't know if it actually managed to get into the, the White House or the Pentagon. Um, so actually, we don't know. But sometimes, in, 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 in art, this is, um, this is an artwork where that, that trick is being used as well, sometimes it's about something you don't see actually, but it's more about the story um, surrounding it. This is not a project I, I did where it's about something you don't see. Um, it's, it's, it's a camera on the street, this one, um, and it was actually making you invisible. And that was true, as long as you were standing in front of that camera. So, unfortunately, it was not true. Yeah, that it worked for every camera. So this guy was dressing up in his, his blue outfit because the color blue was yeah, undetectable. Um, and he actually went to rob a local supermarket and he, um, he scored a beer for that. <laughs> um, it, it would be great, of course, if, if the color blue would be really invisible. Um, for example, you would be able to make a, an invisible burqa and that would be a, a solution to solve the burqa pr problem. It would even be... <laughs> Uh, more invisible, so it's a sort of Burka 2.0, and we wouldn't even see it, so... <laughs> okay, but back to augmented reality. This is uh, Lowlands, this is the Lowlands Festival, this is how people look at the Lowlands Festival sometimes, and I wanted to document it, so I used augmented reality to document it. I used a blue screen, um, I photographed the people there, um, I took a snapshot, and it was uploaded to uh, the augmented reality right at that spot. So those people were now eternally present at Lowlands, even now that the festival is over. 
So this, this infiniteness is another key aspect of augmented reality. Another example, for example, um, this is Eddie the Eagle, you know him. It's the infamous ski jumper that always jumps really short stretches only. Um, this time he's um, jumping forever. He took off in November and he's still flying around the earth. <laughs> he is now at the other side of the earth. So using augmented reality, there will be a lot of invisible stories surrounding us. Uh, some of them are true, like Eddie, and some of them are not true. For example, this one during the um, Nederlands Film Festival a while ago. These people did not really say this. It's just random, but it, it looks like they say it. Um, this is not a PowerPoint presentation, it's a keynote presentation. Um, and I would like to, to end this presentation with this one. When there's no augmented reality in the sky, nothing to view, I have created a screensaver that you can activate. So you look with your phone in the air and you see something. But thereby, actually, there is augmented reality in the sky, uh, which makes it into a situation where, which is true and not true at the same time. So that seems like a nice paradox to leave you with. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Thank you, Sander Veenhoff. Uh, we're going to move over a little bit to the edge of the stage because meanwhile, uh, people are going to build up here for okay. the next yeah. act. And uh, what drives you to add layers to the world? Isn't it interesting enough as it is? No, I, I think the combination is, is much more interesting because you have the physical situation and you have something like with endless possibilities added to that. So the combination is amazing.